Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. My name is Scott. I am one half of the Nerd Cyclopedia team, which is uh, bringing you podcasts about nerd culture one letter at a time. And also, we are doing the Sam and Scott Are Watching Watchmen podcast, which you can catch on our channel. Live shows on Sunday nights. And later on today, we're going to record our recap for episode four, season one, which is, of course, the anagram of today's uh, today's Rick and Morty uh, that we're going to be talking about, which we're pretty uh, pretty stoked about. This is called Edge of Tomorty, Rick Die, Rick Pete. Uh, obvious why it is called that. Um, so today, this is called, uh, this podcast is going to be called Nobody Cares What Scott Thinks, which is, um, you know, a, a show where I get to talk to you about things I like by myself. We decided to, we can branch out a little bit, do more shows. Uh, you know, Sam and I are going to do some of our own stuff. Nothing wrong with the partnership there in case anyone's worried. Uh, you can check me out. Um, our YouTube channel is Nerd Cyclopedia. You can also check out our main flagship podcast, Nerd Cyclopedia, our Nerdendum podcast, the Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen podcast, and Carbonite Bounty BS, which is up and coming. Don't look for that yet because there's nothing there. So, with that housekeeping out of the way, let's talk about this episode of television, which is uh, the Rick and Morty season four premiere, uh, which was ruined by summer <laughs> in a very funny joke Rick told at the end. Uh, I don't want to just spend the whole time listing funny things, although, you know, just off the top of my head, Golden Folds, babies being eaten, um, you know, the the hilarious gory explosion of Rick, Rick's multiple gory deaths. I mean, these things are hilarious things. Um, the bit where, the bit at the end where Morty's plot is inverted is really funny too. Uh, Jessica's going to go be in hospice care because she's basically lazy and doesn't want to go to career day. Uh, very, very awesome there as well. So, so some real cool stuff, some real funny stuff that we can kind of, you know, get into. Um, you know, the descending Ricks, uh, there were Nazis everywhere in Rick's, uh, in Rick's random sort of, you know, uh, Rick's random world. And that's, and that's an interesting meta commentary. You know, some people involved in Rick and Morty's fandom, you know, think that this is a show that's not for everybody. And those people are not, uh, doing anybody a favor. So I'm glad that they were addressed a little bit. One of the things that, this episode showcases is the, the, um, the concept of infinity and the idea of consequence. And as it applies to Rick, I listen to some podcasts about this show, just like I'm sure everyone else does. And one of the things about this particular show that everyone talks about is how infinity is a concept. Nobody can grasp. And this show does as good of a job as any show at, uh, you know, at showing you what infinity is like. And so Rick, Rick wants to die sometimes, and when he does that, he turns off his clones, his backup system, uh, which is like his extra life system. And when he does that, you know, because he's tied into the multiverse in such a way, he can have that information can kind of bleed over into other universes. So Rick kind of gets further and further away from humanity or his humanity, uh, but still maintains a certain Rickness, which is interesting because it implies that Rick's attitude is non non-human. And it also applies, uh, implies that Rick can't die. Uh, you would think, and we saw Rick die a bunch of times here. We saw him die on the planet. We saw him die in the Meeseeks-related uh, Morty, uh, Morty fight catastrophe with Nazi Morty. Um, you know, Rick seems to come back further and further away from the finite central curve, the human Ricks. And one of the things that's cool about that is we get to see Teddy Bear Rick and we get to see Wasp Rick. And we also kind of get an idea that when something like this happens to a Rick and, you know, if you've watched the show since the beginning, you know, there are multiple, multiple times when, um, when Rick would die or a Rick would die, not our Rick, our Rick usually is pretty sturdy. Um, but some Ricks would just get burned up or destroyed. We saw that a lot in the, uh, in the, the first Citadel episode, I think there were a lot of Ricks that got it. Of course, the second Citadel episode. One wonders what happens to those Ricks. Do they stay dead? Do they back up somewhere else? Do they only get one shot at the Citadel? You know, that, that would seem to be a method of control. If you could stop the Rick backups from backing up and you could really kill the Ricks, then that would be something that would, you know, allow you to keep Ricks trapped in the Citadel. It also seems like this clone thing is going to get out of hand and we're probably going to need to reset on that at some point. I know that they're they're talking about this episode resetting the table for them a lot here. It does. I think it does a really good job of introducing a dynamic where, where Jerry is not such uh, such an imbecile, uh, so weak. Uh, he can make Rick ask Morty's permission at least to do things. Um, but, uh, you know, we're really back to season one. Just like they said at the end of season three, things will be a lot like season one, just more streamlined and easier. 
you know, there's some stuff in here that's really, really funny too. The bit where uh, the bit where Morty is talking to the judge and has to kind of sound out the answer because he has to stay on the very narrow path of uh, probability. They're very funny. That's essentially what psychics really do. If you didn't know that uh, psychics do not have uh, a main line to the afterlife shocker shocker. But what they do have is an ability to cold, re- cold read people. And that's something they use to their benefit to convince you that your loved one isn't dead. They're really talking to you. Uh, I'm somebody that thinks that this is uh, evil to do if you know it. And the fact that Morty did it in this case is one of those, you know, hilariously amoral things that, that Rick and Morty do that this show does really, really well. Um, just like how Rick is like, ah, who cares? Ah, who cares? You know, he blew up a planet. You know, we cronenberg everyone. You know, Morty is definitely misleading this judge significantly in order to get himself uh, uh, free, <clears throat> in order to have himself freed. Uh, I thought the... Um, Calling him a science fiction boy was also really great, but that whole little sparrow thing, man, that was that was funny. A really funny in-universe, non-magical use of those uh, death crystals. And I do want to take some time, you know, I want to watch this show again and probably another couple times because I want to see, uh, I want to see all those deaths, all the possible deaths of Morty. You know, this is one of those shows that's dense and deep, and it's a lot like Watchmen, which is the other, you know, the other show we're doing our other flagship cast right now is Watch- Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, uh, and one of the things that that show does real well is it's very intricate and so is its source material. And Rick and Morty is one of those shows that, you know, it sneaks up on you from a standpoint of what it does. And it doesn't really make you, you know, it, it, it has so many different little, uh, intricacies that you can, you can definitely do a surface reading. That's very basic, but if you look into Rick and Morty, you know, it's really, really rewarding because uh, there is continuity all over the place. And even though they pretty much explicitly warned you not to worry about the continuity in this episode, um, and they said this clears up the continuity a couple times, again, more meta-commentary, I think that the the idea that's presented here that's probably the most important is that you know is the immortality of Rick and, and what exactly that means. I mean, Rick can't kill himself. Uh, he can't even, you know, he could uh, you know burn himself or hang him. He'd just wake up in either a clone body or in a clone body in another universe where the, the Rick's that... Uh, weren't as depressed, lived. So so Rick himself, you know, he's developing as a character because, you know, he's willing at least to ask permission because he really does uh, does need Morty. Um, one thing in season, there's, a, there's an episode in season one, I think it's Morty Night Run, where there's a switch up and the Smiths take uh, the wrong Jerry. It's been posited on a lot of message boards that this is actually the changeup. This is actually when Jerry, uh, you know, we see a new set of Rick and Morty's. And one of the things about this that's interesting is that you know Rick destroyed his pet in the um, in the episode with Unity, but he has one here, and that's something that I think is an interesting little clue. We can see, you know, we can kind of see one way or another which way that's going to go. But I think it's strong evidence that this is sort of a secondary or a separate Rick and Morty. So I'm looking forward to see uh, more confirmation or disconfirmation of that. Um, I, I, those not that Nazi thing was weird, man. It was a really funny sort of thing. Uh, the whole Wasp Morty's been on some weird message boards thing is very funny. Um, I also think it was funny that Hologram Rick was so pro Hologram until uh, until being given the option. Uh, very very funny. Uh, I know that there's a lot of hologram people out there that are going to say that I am being anti hologram here, and you know what? I I am being anti hologram. Look, I could touch my own head. I have the sense of feeling, so that is me being chauvinistic about my own abilities. And that's about all I have right now. Uh, it's just a first watch, so you know, let us know what you think. You can get us at uh, nerds at nerdcyclopedia dot com. You can send us some feedback on that. Um, you can catch me on. Uh, Twitch at SC Hitch, where I play video games, uh, usually older ones. I do speedrunning sometimes. And you can also check us out here at Nerdcyclopedia on YouTube. So do subscribe. You'll see the subscribe button above up there. So go ahead and click on that. And, you know, keep your eyes peeled for some more Rick and Morty reaction. Uh, obviously, you know, check out Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen and Nerdcyclopedia. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you in the future. And, you know, we hope you really like the show. We'll see you soon.